NASA releasing stunning new pictures of Jupiter from the Webb Space Telescope that launched back in December. Now in these new composite pictures, you can see incredible rainbow auroras and the swirl of giant storms on the planet's surface. Scientists also point out the faint rings and far off galaxies photobombing in the background around the planet. In the previous episode, we discussed some critical and very momentous dates about Jupiter through the discourse of history. We quickly analyzed how our conception of the largest planet in the solar system developed with the innovation in human technology and the purification of our ideas. In today's episode, we will try to dig deep into the latest missions of NASA and their amazing discoveries about the planet that forced us to change our beliefs which were formulated after the success of early ventures in the 20th century of before. NASA's Juno mission and James Webb Telescope, the favorite of almost every scientist at the moment, are writing history again. Let's know about them, what they are doing and how these doings will impact our lives in the future. Proposed in 2003 and launched in 2011, Juno arrived at Jupiter on July 4, 2016. The prime mission was completed in July 2021 after 37 orbits around the planet. The extended mission involves 42 additional orbits, including close passes of Jupiter's north polar cyclones, flybus of Ganymede, Europa, and Io, and the first extensive exploration of the faint rings encircling the planet. In its first five years, Juno has made some discoveries that raised some deep questions. And to find answers, the original plan to end the mission by crashing it into the atmosphere of Jupiter has been changed. New findings from NASA's Juno probe orbiting Jupiter provide a fuller picture of how the planet's distinctive and colorful atmospheric features offer clues about the unseen processes below its clouds. The results highlight the inner workings of the belts and zones of clouds encircling Jupiter, as well as its polar cyclones and even the Great Red Spot. Researchers published several papers on Juno's atmospheric discoveries today in the journal Science and the Journal of Geophysical Research. Additional papers appeared in two recent issues of Geophysical Research Letters. These new observations from Juno open up a treasure chest of new information about Jupiter's enigmatic observable features, said Lori Glaze, director of NASA's Planetary Science Division at the agency's headquarters in Washington. Each paper sheds light on different aspects of the planet's atmospheric processes, a wonderful example of how our internationally diverse science teams strengthen understanding of our solar system. Previously, Juno surprised us with hints that phenomena in Jupiter's atmosphere went deeper than expected, said Scott Bolton, principal investigator of Juno from the Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio and lead author of the journal Science paper on the depth of Jupiter's vortices. Now we're starting to put all these individual pieces together and getting our first real understanding of how Jupiter's beautiful and violent atmosphere works in 3D. Juno's microwave radiometer MDR, allows mission scientists to peer beneath Jupiter's cloud tops and probe the structure of its numerous vortex storms. The most famous of these storms is the iconic anticyclone known as the Great Red Spot. Wider than Earth, this crimson vortex has intrigued scientists since its discovery almost two centuries ago. The new results show that the cyclones are warmer on top, with lower atmospheric densities, while they are colder at the bottom, with higher densities. Anticyclones, which rotate in the opposite direction, are colder at the top but warmer at the bottom. The findings also indicate these storms are far taller than expected, with some extending 60 miles, 100 kilometers, below the cloud tops and others, including the Great Red Spot, extending over 200 miles, 350 kilometers. This surprising discovery demonstrates that the vortices cover regions beyond those where water condenses and clouds form, below the depth where sunlight warms the atmosphere. The height and size of the Great Red Spot mean the concentration of atmospheric mass within the storm could potentially be detectable by instruments studying Jupiter's gravity field. Two close Juno flybus over Jupiter's most famous spot provided the opportunity to search for the storm's gravity signature and complement the MWR results on its depth. 
with Juno traveling low over Jupiter's cloud deck at about 130,000 miles per hour, 209,000 kilometers per hour. Juno, scientists were able to measure velocity changes as small as 0.01 millimeters per second using NASA's Deep Space Network tracking antenna from a distance of more than 400 million miles, 650 million kilometers. This enabled the team to constrain the depth of the Great Red Spot to about 300 miles, 500 kilometers, below the cloud tops. In addition to cyclones and anticyclones, Jupiter is known for its distinctive belts and zones, white and reddish bands of clouds that wrap around the planet. Strong east-west winds moving in opposite directions separate the bands. Juno previously discovered that these winds, or jet streams, reach depths of about 2,000 miles, roughly 3,200 kilometers. Researchers are still trying to solve the mystery of how jet streams form. Data collected by Juno's MUR during multiple passes reveal one possible clue, that the atmosphere's ammonia gas travels up and down in remarkable alignment with the observed jet streams. By following the ammonia, we found circulation cells in both the North and South hemispheres that are similar in nature to feral cells, which control much of our climate here on Earth," said Karen Dewar, a graduate student from the Wiseman Institute of Science in Israel and lead author of the journal Science paper on feral-like cells on Jupiter. Juno's MBR data also shows that the belts and zones undergo a transition around 40 miles, 65 kilometers, beneath Jupiter's water clouds. At shallow depths, Jupiter's belts are brighter in microwave light than the neighboring zones. But at deeper levels, below the water clouds, the opposite is true, which reveals a similarity to our oceans. We are calling this level the Java Klein in analogy to a transitional layer seen in Earth's oceans, known as the thermocline, where seawater transitions sharply from being relative warm to relative cold said Lay Fletcher, a Juno participating scientist from the University of Leicester in the United Kingdom and lead author of the paper in the Journal of Geophysical Research. Planets highlighting Juno's microwave observations of Jupiter's temperate belts and zones. Juno previously discovered polygonal arrangements of giant cyclonic storms at both of Jupiter's poles. Eight arranged in an octagonal pattern in the north and five arranged in a pentagonal pattern in the south. Now, five years later, mission scientists using observations by the spacecraft's Jovian Infrared Auroral Mapper JIRAM, have determined these atmospheric phenomena are extremely resilient, remaining in the same location. Jupiter's cyclones affect each other's motion, causing them to oscillate about an equilibrium position, said Alessandro Mira a Juno co-investigator at the National Institute for Astrophysics in Rome and lead author of a recent paper in Geophysical Research Letters on Oscillations and Stability in Jupiter's Polar Cyclones. The behavior of these slow oscillations suggests that they have deep roots. JIRAM data also indicates that, like hurricanes on Earth, these cyclones want to move poleward, but cyclones located at the center of each pole push them back. This balance explains where the cyclones reside and the different numbers at each pole. The recent images from the biggest and most powerful telescope humans have ever made are so promising, new and raw. It is for the first time we have seen Jupiter in infrared light, and the results have entirely captured us. With giant storms, powerful winds, auroras, and extreme temperature and pressure conditions, Jupiter has a lot going on. We hadn't really expected it to be this good, to be honest," said planetary astronomer M. K. De Pater, professor emerita of the University of California, Berkeley. De Pater led the observations of Jupiter with Thierry Fauchet, a professor at the Paris Observatory, part of an international collaboration for Webb's early release science program. The two images come from the observatory's near-infrared camera, NIRCAM which has three specialized infrared filters that showcase details of the planet. Since infrared light is invisible to the human eye, the light has been mapped onto the visible spectrum. In the standalone view of Jupiter, created from a composite of several images from Webb, 
auroras extend to high altitudes above both the northern and southern poles of Jupiter. The auroras shine in a filter that is mapped to redder colors, which also highlights light reflected from lower clouds and upper hazes. A different filter, mapped to yellows and greens, shows hazes swirling around the northern and southern poles. A third filter, mapped to blues, showcases light that is reflected from a deeper main cloud. The Great Red Spot, a famous storm so big it could swallow Earth, appears white in these views, as do other clouds because they reflect a lot of sunlight. The brightness here indicates high altitude, so the Great Red Spot has high altitude hazes, as does the equatorial region said Heidi Hamill, Web Interdisciplinary Scientist for Solar System Observations and Vice President for Science at Aurora. The numerous bright white spots and streaks are likely very high altitude cloud tops of condensed convective storms. By contrast, dark ribbons north of the equatorial region have little cloud cover. In a wide field view, Webb sees Jupiter with its faint rings, which are a million times fainter than the planet, and two tiny moons called Amalthea and Adrasti. The fuzzy spots in the lower background are likely galaxies photobombing this Jovian view. This one image sums up the science of our Jupiter system program, which studies the dynamics and chemistry of Jupiter itself, its rings, and its satellite system. This information arrives at the Space Telescope Science Institute, STSI, Webb's Mission and Science Operations Center as raw data. STSCI processes the data into calibrated files for scientific analysis and delivers it to the Mikulski Archive for Space Telescopes for dissemination. Scientists then translate that information into images like these during the course of their research. While a team at STSCI formally processes web images for official release, non-professional astronomers known as citizen scientists often dive into the public data archive to retrieve and process images too. That's the end of our interplanetary ride on Jupiter. Let us know in the comments section if you want to watch the videos on the other planets of the solar system. And while saying that, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Give a cheer to our team, which is working relentlessly hard to make these videos.